Welcome to Institute of Quality and Reliability. Hi, this is Heyman. Reliability apportionment or reliability allocation. In this video, we will explain the concept and overview of reliability apportionment or reliability allocation. We will explain two basic methods of reliability allocation. The first one is of equal allocation and the second one is Aring method. We will explain these methods with illustrations and a practical example. Finally, we will introduce concept of parenting briefly in this video. The reliability allocation process is an important aspect of reliability engineering. It helps system designers select components and apply appropriate design strategies to meet system reliability requirements. The allocation process involves generating a reliability block diagram and specify the system reliability requirements. Reliability requirements are then assigned to subsystems and related components. In the reliability allocation process, first we develop the system reliability model or block diagram and then we define the system level requirement and targets. Based on this, we have to allocate and apportion subsystem level requirement. And then finally, requirements for each subsystem component is finalized based on the allocation model. Commonly used allocation methods are equal allocation and Aring method. In the equal allocation, reliability is allocated equally in all subsystems. This is actually simple, but usually unrealistic. The Aring method was developed by Aring, that is Aeronautical Radio Incorporated Research Corporation. In this method, reliability is allocated as per weighted factors based on current failure rates. Let us now see a simple example of equal allocation method. A system has a series reliability model as shown in the figure. Failure rates are mentioned for each block. Assume that failure rates are constant for all four components so that the system failure rate is the sum of four failure rates which works out to be 30 per million hours. The reliability requirement for the system is a failure rate equal to 20 failures per million hours. Therefore, we write lambda star is equal to 20 Per million hours. Continuing with the equal allocation example, we can easily estimate the failure rate of the system as 30 per million hours. This is greater than the specified system failure rate lambda star of 20 per million hours. Reliability apportionment or allocation is therefore necessary. With equal allocation, Requirement for each subsystem will be lambda star upon 4, that is 5 per million hours. As we can see, this is tough on unit number 3. Thus, Aring method may be a better option for this allocation. Let us understand the Aring allocation method. This was developed by the Aring or Aeronautical Radio Incorporated Research Corporation. The method assumes a series reliability model and exponential times to failure for each subsystem. Predicted failure rate values of each subsystem are used to predict the system failure rate. If the predicted value exceeds the requirement that is sum of lambda is greater than lambda star, allocation becomes necessary. Let lambda i be the estimated failure rate of ith unit. Estimated failure rate of system is sum of all the failure rates if constant hazard rate or failure rate is assumed. 
then we can calculate weightage factor of ith unit as wi is equal to lambda i upon sum of all the failure rates that is sigma i is equal to 1 to n lambda i let us now solve the previous example using Arink method of allocation. The estimated failure rate of the system is summation of all failure rates and we have already seen that it is 30 per million hours. This is greater than the specified system failure rate of 20 per million hours. Therefore, reliability allocation is necessary. Requirement for each subsystem will be proportionately fixed as per weighted factors which can be calculated as follows. The first one is 7 into 20 by 30 which is 4.66 into 10 raise to minus 6 or 4.66 per million hours. Similarly, the other four factors lambda 2 star, 3 star and 4 star can be calculated as 3.33, 8 and 4 per million hours respectively. Further allocation can occur when additional information becomes available. Let us now see a practical example of reliability allocation. Consider a diesel engine. Target failure rate for a new derivative model of engine is 95 per 1000 units by its warranty. This could be based on benchmarking, marketing strategy, capabilities, etc. The engine has the following subsystems, power cylinder, fuel system, air intake system, exhaust system, mechanical system, cooling system, electrical system, electronic controls. There could be more, but I am showing some of the major subsystems. These are first level subsystems of the engine. But each of the subsystem can have further next level of subsystems that is second level could be third level and then finally certain components. For example, the fuel system can have fuel pump, injectors, piping etc. It can also have a software. The injector further can have plunger and spring and uh, barrel and other components. Similarly, air intake system may have air cleaner, turbocharger, intake manifold. Cooling system may have radiator, water pump, oil cooler. Targets for subsystems can be assigned based on historical information, extent of new technology used, complexity, increase or decrease in stress level of the new application as may be appropriate. Target for components can then be assigned. These targets are compared with the predicted values. If the predicted values exceed the targets, further adjustment and or improvement plans are required. The failure rate of the engine is 95. So this target is now allocated for different subsystems. For example, power cylinder may be 12, fuel systems 10, air intake system 7, exhaust system 8, mechanical system 25, cooling system 12, electrical system 16 and electronic controls 5. The mechanical system may have 25 because of large number of parts involved in the, in the mechanisms. Further down, the fuel system may have targets such as 3322, two, the total would be 10 again or the air intake system may have turbocharger 3, intake manifold 2 and air cleaner 2. The turbocharger incidentally would also be part of exhaust system actually. So it will appear in both but uh, in allocation it is shown under air intake system. Cooling system targets may be 5, 3, 4. These are examples and not the actual numbers. The actual numbers will depend on the factors mentioned earlier. Let us now understand concept of parenting. Most often new products are designed by modifying and improving an existing current product. Reason for the new product or model could be to improve market share, could be for expanding to a new market segment or application or could be because of changes in regulations or external factors such as material availability etc. 
whenever a similar product exists it can be used as a reference to allocate reliability targets this process is called parenting here is a top level overview of the parenting process first assign warranty codes to each of the subsystems then choose historical parent which may be appropriate for each subsystem rate each subsystem as better same or worse predict failure rates of each subsystem based on logic or prediction program the prediction program may be there in some companies may not be there if it is there use it if it is not there use your logic experience and expertise technical judgment make adjustment based on the duty cycle warranty market conditions etc let us do a quick recap of this video in this video we have explained the concept and overview of reliability apportionment or reliability allocation we have discussed two basic methods of reliability allocation and these were equal allocation method and arink method these methods were illustrated with a practical example finally we have also introduced and discussed concept of parenting briefly in this video thank you for watching this video hope you found it worth watching please subscribe to institute of quality and reliability channel if you want to watch more videos on reliability engineering six sigma and quality engineering